I kind of hated this. Kind of hated this? Yeah. Well, I mean, you're with the majority. Porter Robinson. Smile. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was brat summer. Now it's brat smile summer. Smile son or brat daughter. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this was good. I think it was fantastical. I didn't think it was as good as Brat. You didn't think it was fantastic? I thought it was just good. Uh, uh Weird. <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel like it's got more room to grow on me, but I just wasn't, like, vibe with it at first, which is weird. It wasn't, like, blowing my trickling off to it this week. It just wasn't scratching that, that itch. That's crazy. That's actually so weird. I kind of expected you to uh, work with this pretty heavily. I definitely do. Now, my score is not negative. I didn't think you were, and if you were, I would probably have to come over there. I was mid on it my first time. That's kind of crazy. So it's already growing on you? Yeah, but it feels like it's just missing something. Really? Yeah. What is making you feel that way? Like, is there something specific you want to point out? I don't know. I just... A feeling in my soul. I didn't sit down with this one as much as I wanted to. It's definitely a good one to sit down with. This one I listened to the most of everything. Same here, yeah. And I liked it the first time. I did run it in the car the first time. And I definitely liked it a lot. And I was expecting to. I loved Porter Robinson's last album. Oh, I haven't listened to Porter Robinson's last album. Oh, it's <laughs> very first. different from this. And I guess it would probably be more aligned with your taste. So you would, you would probably mess with it pretty heavily. I think I like that one <sighs> as much if not better it's much more emotional so i'm like eh but this one's so different they're kind of apples and oranges i i guess we can't really have that conversation if you haven't heard it but fair enough yeah uh do you have any like, specific thoughts on any tracks I, I know for me at least year of the cup and russian roulette are the two tracks that come to mind for me for this album uh, both of those are definitely very significant um what did you think about them specifically if they're the ones that stand out year of the cup is my favorite the vibe the vibe was just so good really that's crazy i like it more than its rating so I'm kind of with you, but, like, it being your favorite is wild. I know. The choice of the Lil Wayne sample being kind of spliced through it is really cool, I think. I like that a lot. Yeah. I like the melody of it, too. Like, the way he sings through it. Yeah. That makes me wonder why you didn't like more on the album, though. It's grown on me. It's good. Like, first listen, I, w I think Cheerleader or the Knock Yourself Out were my favorite one my first listen. But the more I got into it, the more I was more fucking with Russian Roulette and uh, You're the Cup. I absolutely love Russian Roulette. Yeah, it's pretty good. Like, it's a perfect song for me, genuinely. It's mighty close for me. Yeah, it's so great. I love the bridge of that. I It's amazing. I did score Russian Roulette higher than Year of the Cup, but Year of the Cup is my favorite. If that makes sense? That does make sense. It's just such a crazy pick to me. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh shit. It's the lowest rated track, isn't it? Cool. Yeah, it is. It and is. I think it's just because it's structured so different than a normal song would be, I guess. Yeah, I, I understand the general consensus being against it then. Yeah. I really loved the way this album kind of comes to a close. The closer feels very separate from it and feels like kind of an epilogue to me, but then the two tracks before it really rubbed my brain right. Uh, what did you think of those? I thought they were all good. It wasn't hitting in the way that it should, and I could definitely tell that. It was definitely like a 100 gex moment for me, mm. where 100 gex took a second to pop into my cranium, and now I think my lowest rated album when 100 gex is on, like 80 or 90. That's so true. 100 gex didn't click with you right away, and I'm now remembering that being the case this probably has a lot more room to grow on you than you would even imagine <laughs> yeah it's gonna take like late night apex legends oh yeah 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 true those vibes those 2020 2018 thereabouts vibes that was yeah, that was in 2020 vibe yeah dude yeah i really like the inclusion of frost children it's kind of crazy seeing them on a much bigger release because they were pretty underground not too long ago at all i saw them open for george clanton amazing performance from them um and i i liked the addition to mona lisa and it's part of what makes mona lisa amazing to me i have never listened to frost children really i thought i showed you them maybe i didn't maybe maybe not that makes sense something about there's this like loop to it the lyrics on it and everything on is there really no happiness just does a lot for me and i'm wondering if in the future you'll you'll kind of feel me on that more because i don't know did that feel like a significant moment to you is there really no happiness let me pull up my flux capacitor <laughs> is there really no happiness that, that track was yeah i could tell that there was supposed to i could feel the emotions that i was supposed to be feeling but i just wasn't feeling them i think that's a very confusing sentence but i think i know what you mean <laughs> good better 
Yes, indeed. I really love the whole, like, Y2K and very internet-heavy aesthetic of all of this. Yeah. It's just very cool. Brings some nostalgic vibes. Yeah, dude. I definitely should like this. It definitely feels like in the right bag for what we've been enjoying this year. Yeah, it's it's right alongside it. It's a really great, fun summer album that's got a little bit more depth to it, and that's why that Brat comparison is kind of floating around. Yeah. It's also getting this kind of, like, cult following, much like Brat is. Brat has only grown on me, so I think this will also only grow on me. That's fair. I I lost my thought, but now that I'm listening to, like, Perfect Pinterest Garden right now, this is fucking vibing, banging. That's good. That's very good to hear. I have been hitting a weed pen for, like, three or four hours, though. Oh, man. <laughs> I feel like this will hit better. I have no idea. I'm not really sure where that would work in my mind. It's banged right now, bro. Very glad to hear it. That's actually maybe my least favorite, but just because it feels a little less like a full song than the other ones. Yeah. I don't dislike how it sounds at all by any means, but... What's your score? My score on this, I am going with a 90 currently with a lot of room to grow. I'm at a 74. Jesus fuck. (laughs) (laughs) you're farther you're you're we're both the same distance away from the user score are we really what's the user score yeah because you're at 90 82 oh so i'm eight below it and you're eight above it huh i guess a lot of people who weren't super hyped for it probably came in since the last time i looked because it was like 86 or 85 i saw that yeah no dude i'm hater mode bro that's crazy and then next up we have ice spice Oh man, damn it, I fucking, this shit's, this shit's hitting more. What is mustard? Man, uh, no, fucking Port Robinson, I should have just got high. <laughs> Live reaction here. Micah is running Porter Robinson in the background, and his stony baloney ass is just like, no, actually, this is fantastic. This is like a high Micah 90. How the fuck I'm still chewing bitches in gray shorts and a plain tee? Mad as fuck if I was them. I ain't tripping the grip of my purse. I don't care, cause he did it first. He begged me to stay, but I'm dipping. Think you the shit, bitch? You not even the fuck. I really hate looking at Ice Spice's album of the year page. Uh, why is that? The the cartoons make me uncomfortable. The cartoons? The cartoon. Oh, that's right, that's right. I know what you're talking about now. I forgot about her old album covers. Those are horrific. <laughs> Put that on the worst album cover. Fuck it. Playlist. What do you think? What do you think? Kind of sucked. Kind of sucked? Yeah. I'm glad you say kind of sucked and not totally sucked. Oh, why? Uh, this is kind of hard for me to hate. The production's really good. I don't really like any of her flows. Uh, she kind of only has one. That's the main point I made against this. I did do a written review. She has no versatility. I feel like the beat felt samey. Uh, no, not really. Or like reused? Maybe some of it. I feel like she kind of hops from the drill type production to like some rage stuff to like some trap stuff. It kind of covers all the mainstream rap. Like, I mean, it goes places. Yeah, I think the rage stuff was like the worst of it. Oh, really? I kind of like it. Yeah, I didn't kind of fuck with it. I didn't like it at all. Mm. To be fair, Yeet's album took a while to grow on you. So there's that. (laughs) I kind of hated this. Kind of hated this? Yeah. Well, I mean, you're with the majority. From you, I kind of take it as like a normal fucking thing to say. Just because this seems in line with things you dislike. But I truly do feel like Ice Spice gets so much of her hate because she's a female rapper. And female rappers just automatically do. And it's kind of sad. Yeah, it's kind of fucked up. My wife gave me homework to listen to Megan The Stallion. Oh yeah, Megan The Stallion is fantastic. But even she gets, like, quite a bit of hate very disproportionately. That's fucked up. It is fucked up. I feel basically the same way about Ice Spice right now as I do about Sexy Red. Neither one of them are great for sure like they're definitely making some pretty mid music and there's a lot you can critique about it but dudes are making equally mid music and get praise or indifference for it yeah, man. like i would rather listen to this 10 times out of 10 than some like fucking bloated hour and a half long trap album that just sounds like every other bloated hour and a half long trap album yeah i think i'm gonna give the next one that comes across my my desktop a zero <laughs> yeah like i'm thinking like gunna's album let's see what does that have as a user score if gonna drops that again it's getting a zero <sighs> He kind of does every time, so there's a very strong possibility. (laughs) He could always 
switch it up. I don't fucking know. But yeah, okay, so I'm looking at this. Gunna has 14 more points on his user score for that last album, and that was so fucking boring. At least there's some fun moments on this. Yeah, like, there was some goofy shit. Yeah. They kind of made me hate it more, but I appreciate that it's there, and I'd rather be there than listen to Gunna again. Look, that all being said, there's a lot to critique here, and I guess I kind of already put it out there that she has, like, one or two flows and reuses them a lot. Yeah. As a rapper, kind of lacking, for sure, and I think that if she did a longer project, it would be a little insufferable <laughs> to uh, deal with that. Uh, probably close number. Yeah, yeah, but again, thankfully, it's not, and for that reason, it's kind of fun. I don't know. Yeah. Stupid bars across this, dumb poop bars constantly, uh, which is annoying. Yeah. Gunner was on this album. Oh yeah, he was actually. <laughs> Speak of the devil. He says something really stupid in his verse that doesn't make any fucking sense, and I forgot what it was. I heard Travis Scott like twice, and he was like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> they threw his ass on there, bro. Yeah, yeah, no, he's he's on here. I think his feature's fine. Yeah, like I didn't really hear him at all. No, he's he's a pretty significant part of the track. Oh, was he? I was just fucking not listening all the way then. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I only got through this album once, and it was with my wife, and she was talking about it with me. Okay, yeah, that's fair. I mean, I. I feel like you kind of get the summary of it as you listen to it. It's not deep, obviously. There is a song on here called Thank You the Fart, or... <laughs> Thank you the fart. Thank you the shit. Thank you the shit. <laughs> fart. Best track on the album. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the better ones. I mean, honestly, it's kind of fun. Take out the meme review that I was just doing. It is one of the better tracks. Oh, yeah, for sure. No, it's it's fun. It's, it's dumb. It's just dumb fun, though. It's turn your brain off music, you know? Yeah, like, my wife mentioned that'd be really good in the background. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's fine. I disagreed, slightly. Why do you disagree? Some of it gets kind of annoying, point out a couple tracks. Sure. I don't think I like Doshi, and I think that's a hot take. I mean... No, it's not a hot take. It's kind of right in the middle with ratings, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's like a 42, so yeah. Yeah. Personally, I don't think I would replay the song. I, I don't know if I would replay most of this, but it's like fine if it's on, I'm, I'm not really gonna complain. I won't get angry, but I'll be like, ugh. I get ugh when I hear mid-music almost more yeah same i think did it first with central c is kind of a banger even though central c as a person seems fucking annoying like he still raps pretty good <laughs> there's so much just like shit talked about around him i don't even know where we're at with the controversies i'm just ignoring that that's the other tiktok song too oh is it really is it popping off on there yeah makes sense makes sense that song was good too not good but like not Bad. I think it's oh, legitimately fine. good. I think I gave that like a seven. I'm totally fine with it. Okay. That's yeah. fair. I think I'm at a six with it. That's also totally fair. There's just a lot of disproportionate hate here. I think it is partially just that people aren't realizing the self-awareness. I think she knows that she's kind of making a joke of it, right? Yeah. It just feels underdone. Well, if she's gonna be absurd, she'd be more absurd, honestly. True, yeah. That's one of my complaints. I think she's just fucking roll with it. It kind of feels like she's scared. I can see that. I can see that. Maybe not extreme in the way of poop bars, but do say more like ridiculous shit. Yeah. We don't need more poop bars, please. <laughs> She also mentioned Doja Cat. I can't remember what it was about. I think it was just, like, referencing that Doja Cat, like, did some crazy shit or something. I'm so not in the know on the pop rap drama. <laughs> I just know it exists. My wife is more than us. I remember Doja Cat shaving her eyebrows and her hair. Other than that, I just have no idea. Yeah. I don't really know if there's anything else to say about this. I can't say that it's an album that I recommend, but it's not one that deserves a user score of 33 there's a factor here involved that uh has nothing to do with the music you know yeah that definitely is annoying i honestly didn't even think about that my wife mentioned it earlier today and i was like oh fuck that's right <laughs> yeah i don't think you're really like in on the whole discourse around hip-hop as much no. as i have been throughout the years and it's something that is observable also where, where is the y2k concept that's another big critique i'd give to this <laughs> yeah, i forgot it was called that yeah i constantly forget it's called that too there's nothing y2k about this it all feels very modern yeah yeah i don't know was she born in 2000 maybe i don't know but y2k is like an aesthetic one second let me just look up when ice space was born porter robinson's album was y2k so but she was born in january 1st 2000 oh so maybe it is in reference to her actual date of birth bro we're the same age as ice place it's crazy uh you are i'm younger 
but no, she's a year older than me. Oh, okay. We we would have had classes with Ice Spice. Is Billie Eilish not younger than us? I think she is. Yeah, dude. Yeah, fuck. Ah, oh, God. <laughs> It's things like that that make me just go like, oh man, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't think I would trade lives with Ice Spice, quite honestly. <laughs> mm, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's more debate. I would with Billie Eilish. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's no, so I don't, fucking I don't talented. That's either. totally irrelevant, but still. I... <laughs> yeah. All right. I feel like she's just embracing the fact that people are calling her music trash, too. Because, again, if we're going to go a layer deep with that irony, putting the album title on the fucking trash can, like, <laughs> bro. Oh, yeah. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. This is a terrible album cover. I can't lie to you, but there's redeeming qualities here that people are ignoring. There's a C in her butt crack. There is indeed. I I <laughs> hate that the spray paint goes over her. It pisses me <laughs> off. <laughs> it's, Dude, that's awesome. It's like she's a statue and people have just graffitied over her. Dude, fuck. Maybe that's symbolism. Who knows? Maybe it goes way deeper than we're even considering. Think of this shit. Not even the part. Yes, indeed. What'd you score this? 42. 42? I'm proud of you for not giving it a terrible score. I went with a 55. It doesn't break into like an actual positive range because I feel like five is indifferent, six is positive, and I, I can't be fully positive on it. I feel like six is leaning. Yeah, right. Six is the start of the positive range, so it's it's right below. And I mean, my math maths out yeah. to about 55 anyways, so. I had to make sure this score was around the same as Gunna's last album. I gave Gunna's last album a 40, but I gave this two more points because Gunna was on it. I thought that's funny. That is funny. Maybe I should have taken away two more points, but... Who knows? Who knows, man? An album that's not too far up. Up next, we have Mustard, Faith of a Mustard Seed. We on bright and white. Growing up, growing my pops never felt stable. They had company because TV didn't have cable. Feeling like one of them ones. It's a whole loaf, nigga, what's a crime? Yeah, we sure do. Formerly DJ Mustard, now known as Just Mustard. Just Mustard. Isn't there a band called uh, Just Mustard? I don't fucking know, but... <laughs> yeah, there is. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. This looks like another mid-album. Yeah, no, this is uh, not good. <laughs> I don't like it enough to call it mid. It just hits that category of bad for me. I think this album does a great deal of proving the fact that the producer compilation type album scheme can go pretty wrong. Yeah, I only got this album once, and not a lot of it stuck around. Mm. I feel crazy, because lineup, you have Willy Yachty, you have Vince Staples, you have Schoolboy Q. Yeah, man, you got quite the range, and unfortunately, most of those features did not show up at all. <laughs> they phoned it in. I'm listening to Pressure Up right now, Yeah, and this track's just okay. It's fine. Oh, really? You don't, you don't think any higher of it? I do actually really like that one. I'm feeling a light 7, if not a hard 6, by late seven, I mean like a, in the like sixty-eight, mm -hmm. almost a seven out of ten. No, I feel that. I don't know. You can mess with that. It's kind of annoying. Why wow, mustard? You have the the best DJ name, bro. DJ Mustard, fuck it. Yeah. Mustard's so good. Hot off the press of Not Like Us being kind of a, a moment for him. Uh, one of the bigger songs he's been on, period, and definitely the biggest in quite some time. Yeah, dude, bro, what are you doing, man? You're on Not Like Us, but you can't, can't be good. We needed a Kendrick feature on here. It's really a shame. Kendrick Lamar where? Yeah, he probably wanted that to happen, but I don't know. Kendrick's probably cooking, because people are saying he might drop an album soon. Oh. Yeah, so... That's possible. It would have been really nice to see him on here. Definitely would have spiced things up a little bit. Realistically, the only songs I'm going to replay are One of Them Ones and Pressured Up. I think those can definitely go on some playlists. Everything else here, pretty mid, um, if not bad. Yeah, I, you know what? Fuck it. I'll, I'll, I'll let you have it. I do like those two. I ran them a couple of times just to make sure I actually like them. I think the vocal performances on One Bad Decision are also really good, but the flow of the track is kind of iffy. Fair. Yeah, but then we got moments like Yak's Prayer with Kodak Black, where he's basically aimlessly rambling for the duration of the track. I want to say that is three minutes and 25 seconds of my life I will never get back. I mean, like, look... I hate to be... Well, no. Uh, fuck it. I don't even hate to be a ha hater. Fuck it, dude. Uh, why pick Kodak Black for this introspective piano beat? Like, what? what's... I don't think Kodak Black owns a mirror. I... <laughs> fuck. 
<laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm not even sure you can say that. Um, <laughs> Why wouldn't I be able to? I don't know, man. I don't know. Track six is seven to seven. And that threw me off so bad, bro. Like, make seven to seven, track seven, motherfucker. That's true. That's a flavor fail. Fuck you. That's true. None of these tracks go in an order, motherfucker. You know this. No, no, they don't. And I do feel like these, like, DJ mix type albums don't need to like i'm thinking the lyrical lemonade album they just kind of need to be a banger compilation or like have some just interesting things sporadically placed throughout and um this is an example of of that but it kind of feels like a flow was attempted especially with all those skits you know what i mean yeah that's double the reason why i put seven to seven at seven yeah exactly the flow if it doesn't really make sense to me what was your thoughts on pray for me the closer oh yeah actually definitely should make mention of that one that's probably the best not the best moment on the album but definitely one of the best uh moments on the album it's the longest one yeah it's pretty great track and i like that he's actually rapping on it and giving all these uh mentions to people he appreciates and stuff it's very wholesome it's a good emotional send-off yeah it's a good time yeah it makes me wish that the rest of the album was good yeah same yeah i mean he could have had a decent ep honestly you know fuck it like make make it almost a single only put three tracks on it <laughs> put up like pressured up and then he said one of them ones and then pray for me there's some bad features on here uh that like don't strike me as mid just actually strike me as bad future is one of them not that i didn't want to hear future he usually thrives in this type of environment dude a future is tired i don't even think so i think they just picked the worst beat possible to put future on facts but man you did two albums this year <laughs> yeah true true they're both long as balls true bro needs to take a rest <laughs> <laughs> uh, um he sounds ridiculous on it not because he really sounds any different than he normally does but just because this beat for future are you kidding me it doesn't work at all it doesn't yeah i'm listening to it right now and i just don't even fucking know what the hell is happening no it makes him sound terrible uh, young thug on ghetto not good not good not good that chorus is terrible i really don't know why young thug press send on that well He's in prison or whatever, so I guess he probably didn't. I don't know why somebody pressed send on that for him. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds horrific. I really do not like the vocal register he's getting in there. And again, this is coming from somebody who is a fan of both Young Thug and Future. I like plenty of both of their work, but no to these features. Big, big fat fucking no. I'm sorry. Fuck, dude. I don't even want to talk about something more. <laughs> no, it's kind of a mess. Yeah. And you know, even as mix of songs from a producer, these beats are not really anything special. Yeah, it just kind of feels like regular ass beats versus just like, oh yeah, this is like my signature. You selling this to fucking random people. Yeah, feels like random beats for random people that shouldn't be on the tracks they're on. Yeah. Oh god, and like, there's a couple times too where I feel like the song is just edging me the whole way through and it just fucking never drops. It's it's so <laughs> annoying. <laughs> fucking up now as your opener? Bro, why does it... Well, semi-opener, I guess. Sorry. There's an intro, but... um, wh Why does it not ever drop and just has like a random beat switch that has no transition it's very odd oh god i hate that i'm glad i'm not crazy a lot is on this fucking track bro we love Liotti. yeah of course we do he did nothing wrong here what was your overall score i ended up with a 48 on this 48 i ended up with a 49 whoa we're almost the same nice the album of the year came out this week bro oh yeah dude highest rated album of this week is joy again song and dance <laughs> For their second and final album. Oh, is it only the second album, really? Yeah. Weird. They do a lot of EPs and singles. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Kind of seems like that sort of band. You're the Joy Again fan of the two of us, uh, so let me know how I'm supposed to feel about this. Yeah, this is kind of mid. Feel you, 100%. I'm very glad you have that to say, because I kind of felt like I was going crazy, to be quite honest. I, you know, I'm just coming straight up by score. I landed on a 69, and I need to defend that, because that feels like a hot take. Oh, that's not a hot take. I'm 
two points off from the user score. Oh, uh, but there's only 14 ratings. But I just felt like this was almost good. I felt like the album just needed more time to marinate. They need to like work together better and make more interesting songs. Like they did really, really good with, with their EP, their self titled EP. And they did this with their last album too. They just didn't do anything daring or good. Or not last album. What the fuck did they drop? They dropped a, a long EP, longer EP called Piano. And it's just like regular rock. I don't even know how to fucking describe the genre. Indie rock. Yeah, totally. Nothing interesting. Uh, but it's it's not bad either. Like, it's perfectly passable. I would be at a lower score if I wasn't so biased. Okay. I really wanted this to be good. Yeah. I mean, I like the cover and I know you like them. So I kind of came in expecting something a little better and then left pretty much feeling how you're feeling without any of the context it feels very much so just like really standard indie rock stuff um i mean i listened to courting this year we both listened to cheek face if you do an equation of the two of them you kind of end up with this uh but i feel like you could say that about like a million other bands too yeah dude this is just alex g but like a normal person did it (laughs) yeah maybe i don't know he's pretty influential in indie rock right uh yeah that makes sense if we're kind of getting a bunch of alex g's sons everywhere yeah (laughs) i feel like this does have some kind of like fun little summer jams if you want to look at them that way yeah i mean yeah yeah kind of kind of a bop Uh, i'm trying to think of like the actual track style oh yeah let's do a dance was probably like the best track yeah 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 i'm actually with you let's do a dance is good very good i think that was one of the singles same with shuby and angel like i feel like for the singles unfortunately you listed off my top three tracks <laughs> <laughs> just now those are my top three um and i think they're just like fun little jams and i know i said let's do a dance is very good i guess i kind of just more meant that comparatively because those three are all sevens for me oh they're just little indie rock jams i don't know i land in some eight because good joy again to me is great because i love joy again but they also had really cool uh single covers and i've had a lot of time to sit with them yeah i ran this a couple times sometimes Sometimes casually, sometimes not. Oh, I do like those single covers. They they got the album cover game on point, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. I don't really care for the vocal tones sometimes. A uh, little whiny, little like high register nasally stuff it gets on my nerves a little bit. Yeah, I don't think so. You don't think so? I think the flaws of the album show more on slow songs. Yeah, which is a fucking shame because their best work, which was their self settled EP, is like pretty much all slow songs. Really? I have got to check it out. I, I'm curious. Okay, so the consensus is that it's mid, but I, I think it's an 85. All right. I mean, hey, you know, have your take. I couldn't speak on it at all. I maybe have heard it, it from you, but I don't think so. No, this is a fairly recent development. Oh, okay. Probably not then. You like giving a shit about the EP versus giving a shit about the two singles they had? Oh, okay. I got you. Cool. There's some good stuff, but I, I can't really say that I want to come back to it. Yeah, I definitely won't be. Probably, it's going to grow off of me. Hmm, fair. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add maybe like 10 points to my five. Fair. I understand you coming in here and wanting to rate it a bit higher. If this is uh, keyed into your tastes... I mean, no need to conform, I guess, if that makes sense. No, no. It, if you look at, like, my past scores on, on any other stuff, I think this is the highest I've scored something <laughs> besides the EP and the two singles that I like looking out for you and how you feel. One thing that I just also wanted to mention, just a really brief mention, I did really like some of the textures. There's some prominent bass. I, of course, fuck with that a lot. Yeah, dude, go listen to their self-titled EP. You're gonna like it then. Okay. Man, it, it, it's what they do best. They try doing this kind of thing on piano but it didn't go very well their first album is just mixed like dog shit that's why it's mid mm. they ended up remastering a lot of songs in their self-titled ep okay these guys just don't have a lot of music fair yeah is this a side project or something else I don't believe so, because I know they're breaking up. Mm, okay. Might be in the future, then. I don't know. It was like 10 years, and yeah, no, it wasn't like a side project of anyone major. Okay. It was just like four dudes. Gotcha. Five dudes. Okay. Well, yeah, there's some good stuff here, I guess. It's fine. Yeah, some good, some mid, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, would cool, you end up... Uh, I went with a 59 on this. I went with the 69. Nice score consensus is 64 yeah that's how math math is yeah yeah a little bit of a short episode this week yeah we went with uh four albums we thought about doing five there is an additional one we kind of wanted to include but it's one that needs to sit with you a little bit so we're gonna give that some time to cook yeah it's hakushi hasigawa that 
potentially could have been the highest rated album. Since you didn't like Smile as much, then yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Uh, so we don't really have anything written down for next week. I think Killer Mike is dropping, so we'll cover that for sure if so. Other than that, we might end up just putting it on next week. And we did want to get this one out a little earlier. We're going to try to do that, so we're just getting in our flow and our rhythm here. Our circadian function has to recalibrate. Yeah, we've been doing these on Thursdays and then posting them by Saturday since... February, right? Yeah, around the beginning of the year. Yeah, so, I mean, like five months here, we've kind of been in this rhythm, but we really want to start getting these out a little earlier, so they're a bit more relevant to the current discourse, and, uh, you know, it seems to make a little bit more sense to give y'all recommendations from the actual last week of music, rather than stuff that came out, uh, like, nine days ago, you know? I mean, things move so fast on the internet right now that it's kind of like, oh, another cycle of music came out? Well, I fucking forgot about all the other ones already. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, a little bit of a quick one. We will go back to our five album rhythm for sure. But that's what we got for you this week. Let's go ahead and do a quick run through of ratings here. Tied for last place, funnily enough. Yeah. At a 48.5%, we have Ice Spice, Y2K, and Mustard. Baked of a mustard seed. It's honestly fitting that these both got the same score. Yeah, I think they have positives and negatives that are both very different from each other but a balanced out amount of both if you like take the best parts of both these albums you'll have one decent to good album and if you take the worst parts out of all those albums you'll have a zero i yeah i can fuck with that <laughs> uh, yeah that seems about right yeah yeah it's, that's tied for last i guess in second place would be joy again song and dance our second place this week super high score of 64 percent. sure fucking is this is like the most midweek we've done as far as our actual scores we we have yeah dude yeah but then uh we'd win one good album drop with porter robinson smile at 82 percent yeah that's not a terrible top of the week no i really do feel like by the end of the year here you're gonna be like kicking yourself i kind kind of was uh, for not giving brat like a little bit higher than i did so i don't know i feel like our year-end list will reflect uh what we've like cared about over the course of the year because we're at least coming to an end i mean we only have like three months before lists come out august oh yeah i guess so yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's. I wouldn't say it's coming to a close. We got another third of the year yet that's, like, music season still. That's so forward. Yeah, I feel like August is pretty pretty big some of the time. So, yeah, I mean, July's coming to an end here. Yeah, and then all, the, all the winter albums, all the sad slow choral drop this winter. Fuck yeah. Oh, God. Winter is so hype. Winter is the most underrated season. And even some good fall stuff. Stuff... It's good in the fall sometimes. Yeah. I'm looking at this album that I think the earliest album that I, re- that I reviewed this year is uh, the Tepir album that came out back in January. The what? Tepir. Oh. I don't know if you got around to it. I can't remember. Cool. Yeah. Well, we're excited to see where the rest of the year in music goes. We're at an interesting little, little breaking point. We'll see what else happens. It should get interesting. I mean, fuck, we still got Sophie's album yet to come. I mean, things are going to be interesting. Oh. Oh, shit. It's a posthumous album, so I'm so scared. Right, totally. I know that I'll have a strong take on it, <laughs> at the very least. Um, that's just the first thing coming to mind. But yeah. Hudeka the Vanisher, allegedly. Yeah, Quanka, we need it. Be the, be the doobie, be the doobie, be the, be the doobie. <laughs> <laughs> you but pronouncing Biba. things high is super funny. <laughs> be a new be, 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 All right, all right. Be bad. Let's do wrap it be. up. Let's let's fucking wrap it up. All right. <laughs> Um, thank you all very much for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy what you've seen in this episode today, we would greatly appreciate a like on the video. You can subscribe to the channel for more music related content coming your way. Episodes every week, they're going to be out a little earlier. So, uh, fucking let's go. Yeah. And, uh, Micah, do you have anything else to say to the people before we go? Be the boopy ba do be the mag magdalena magdalena bay delete be the boo do do be 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 the do be be the be 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 ba no be ba do be okay be ba do be is where i will end that's pretty wholesome and we'll see you next time